On April 1st, 2019, I sold my company for $30 million. The day after was the day I decided to start living for a living. Before I walk you through how I accidentally turned myself into a samurai, cowboy, private jet flying, red carpet walking motherfucker, let me bring y'all back. I was just a kid with five grand and a dream, but I said, fuck it. It's time to change the supplement game forever. I wasn't the most handsome looking dude back then, nor was I the most business savvy. But what did I have? Obsession. I was the business equivalent of a Modern Warfare 2 junkie fueled by Adderall and G Fuel. But instead of Call of Duty, my video game was e-commerce. Going down rabbit holes on sketchy late night forums, staying up late figuring out how to rank my products at the top of Amazon, I went full mad scientist testing my formulas. To everyone around me, I looked like a madman. But as the saying goes, you're only crazy until you're successful. Fast forward to 2019. Those four years took at least 20 off my life, but at least the hard part was behind me. Or so I thought. What was supposed to be the exit that changed my life turns into months of brutal negotiations, disagreements with my partners, and some lonely ass nights. But being the madman I was, I kept it fucking moving. Closing day, the moment I was waiting for, the moment that would cement me as a success to all of the friends and family that doubted me along this entire journey. I waited, glued to my laptop for that juicy eight figure wire to hit my account. This was it. Bang, deposited, the deal's done, wraps. But I sat looking at that number feeling like the biggest loser in the world. I did it, but at what cost? I was a ball of stress and anxiety. It felt like there was a knot in my stomach. My health deteriorated tremendously during those four years. I was spiritually and mentally lost with nothing but a fucking fake number to show for it. It was time for a reset. It's ironic that you need to go through full-on capitalistic greed before you can understand the lifestyle of a monk. But hey, better late than never, right? I immersed myself in stoic teachings, trying to heal my soul from years of torment that I had put it through. I did all of the hippie stuff that I used to think was corny, took a few trips, started realizing that there was more to life than stacking bread. This is when I started living for a living. I wanted to be Rob Oliver, AKA Rob the Bank. I bought into the lie that chasing money would do it for me. <laughs> what a fucking lie. No disrespect, but how many CEOs do you know out there that aren't absolute dorks? They've only mastered one of the many pillars that make up this game we call life. Let me save you the trouble. The first stage of my life maxing journey was my brand. Something fresh, something provocative. I started treating social media like a Pinterest mood board doing things in a way where people repped my lingo, not the other way around. Speaking my truth, not anyone else's. Everyone has a little bit of an artist in them, but no one wants to be the black sheep. Did everyone agree with the fact that I was posting half nude videos from my hot tub? Fuck no. I got so much hate for that one. Was everyone cheering, yay, go Rob, when I started talking my shit and showing how much my brands were making? Absolutely not. Why be the 881st Alex Hormozzi when I could be the first Rob Oliver instead. Speaking of which, that brings me to fashion. I flipped the script on the CEO drip. No more fucking turtlenecks or Patagonias. That could never be me. In this new age of internet enterprise where we're free to express ourselves however we want to without the burden of stuffy corporate meetings, why would I ever wear something that I don't wanna wear? And on the flip side of that, you'll never catch me wearing designer just to wear designer. I only buy something if I genuinely like it. You should try it. Fitness isn't just some trend, nor is looks maxing. Looking good matters. If you want to turn heads when you walk into a room, that mystical aura matters. I set up Muay Thai multiple times a week, lifting some heavy ass weights. I'm trying to always be in Super Saiyan mode. Everyone respects that dude or girl that walks into a room, veins popping, physique chiseled, just glowing with vitality. And for those of you that cope by saying, it's what's on the inside that matters. Your outside world is a reflection of what's going on in here. Hold that. 
And finally, being able to print money while you sleep. To be able to live for a living, you have to fund it somehow, but it doesn't have to be a miserable process. I'm building my latest brand in a dramatically different way than back then, thinking like an actual entrepreneur and not just a hustler, finding great people to do business with, people like my absolute brother, Jimmy, ride or die, like the hundreds of creators that make up my army and that I pay hundreds of thousands of dollars in commission every single month. Actual leverage that allows for you to focus on the most needle moving tasks in your business instead of just being in some crusty basement pressing buttons on a laptop every month. Look, this life maxing shit isn't about doing shit exactly like me. Yes, there are pillars, but you have to figure out exactly what that looks like for you, searching for your truth, and then writing your fate with your daily actions. This life shit is about more than just working, man. Start living for a living.